Okay, we're back for part two of Don't Be a Wimp 101. Refried beans, and now we're going to turn the refried beans into burritos. Let me turn some music on, and it's not going to be that neat and dark. That was depressing. That something about depression. They say that if you're depressed, you could turn on your radio to music that matches your mood. And then, so if you're depressed, put it to sort of down music, and then slightly elevate the music to where it's more upbeat. And they say sometimes that helps your mood, helps to change the chemicals in your brain, and make you feel better. Um, I don't know. Sometimes I feel like that works. Sometimes. We'll see. Okay. Oh, we got some Bowling for Soup, Stacy's mom. That's pretty cool. All right. So, when you buy tortillas, you can buy all kinds of tortillas. At the store, they have uh, the plain white flour tortillas. They have whole wheat tortillas. They have tomato and basil tortillas. They have spinach and asparagus tortillas. I mean, every kind you can imagine. This time right here is um, from La Tortilla Factory, and it's made with uh, olive oil and has high fiber. Not necessarily organic, but it has zero trans fat, which I think is pretty good. I mean, you don't want a whole lot of uh, fat in your diet, right? Saturated fat, 0 0.5. That's good, because they say that, you know, saturated fat it's not good for you. Clogs up your arteries and stuff. But you know, like I said, my grandma lived to be in her, for one grandma lived to be in her 90s, and everybody else, oh, my grandparents lived to be in their 80s, and they were putting down the saturated fat. Just shoving that stuff in. But, they, um, the ones that passed on had things like colon cancer from maybe too much chewing tobacco. The other ones had, like, strokes. Maybe that was from too much cholesterol. I don't know. They were old. So anyway, we got our tortillas here. And we are going to do a tortilla rolling uh, demonstration. I am not an expert tortilla roller. I am a very basic... I like to do basic cooking stuff for... A life that is not very complicated as far as, you know, cooking goes. I can do some some complicated things, like the apple creek recipe that I learned. That's pretty complicated. But for the most part, I try to keep things simple. I won't be eating this due to the spices. I cannot eat spicy food like I, I talked about in the other video. I can't do a lot of spice because it gives me a lot of pain. I can't do a lot of fat. And I have a very hard time chewing food. So, what does that leave me with? Basically, baby food and soft food, like Bartlett pears that are real smushy, bananas, um, not a lot. So, needless to say, I probably will never have a weight problem. But, I do have a problem with, uh, basically socializing with people in a food setting because, I mean, it's kind of embarrassing to tell people, oh, hey, I can't chew that because I'm going to choke on it. Do the acid reflux, you know, things like that. But we all have things that we have to deal with, not just with food issues, um, life issues. We have life issues. So, I mean, if somebody can't deal with the fact that I'm going to sit there and eat baby food out of, out of a package, then and maybe that person shouldn't be my friend. You know, they're that judgmental about it. Anyway, no one's ever done that to me. People are pretty cool about it. They basically just say, you know, that that must not be that must not be fun. And I say, well, you know what, there's a lot of different foods you can eat that are soft and you don't choke on. Let's see, I'm gonna get a paper plate. 
Sometimes I can eat crackers, you know. That's not a big problem. So basically, you can get your food groups in. You get your fruits, your vegetables, if, if you cook them really super soft, like broccoli. I like to eat broccoli, but it's got to be super soft. And most of my foods have to be cooked very soft. If I were to eat something like this, I wouldn't refry it with the margarine. And I wouldn't put anything in it but very light amount of salt. That's it. Just beans with a little bit of salt. And I could eat the beans. I don't think I'd put it in a burrito tortilla because it might be hard to swallow the tortilla. But my husband likes burritos, so we are going to make this for him. He can eat spices. So you get yourself a little bit of your bean mixture. Put it on the corner part here. Just a little bit, like, you know, a couple tablespoons full. And what you'll do next is you'll fold the sides in, the two sides. Okay? So it looks like this. See the two sides? Because what we're doing is we're making an envelope. We don't want to roll it up like a like a horn. We roll it up like a horn. When you eat it, it's going to fall out the bottom, right? So what we want to do is make like an envelope, like this. This is going to be the sides. We grab this here, and we roll it over the bean mixture very easily. And then we roll the bean mixture. These are not the most flexible tortillas, but you have to be pretty gentle with them. So you see that? person can very easily pick it up and eat it, and it's not going to fall out the end. And what I like to do is put them in freezer bags, freeze them, and then, as they're needed, take them out, and... There you go, it's a quick meal. It's a quick, healthy meal. We all have to adapt to our circumstances in life, right? We may have bad things happen to us. Well, we will have bad things happen to us. It's just how it is in life. We have bad stuff happen. And uh, it can cause a lot of problems, health problems, psychological problems, physical problems. And um, you do the best you can. You do the best you can. You treat people good and you try to live the best life you can. Because when you're when you're going to die, well, I've been very close to dying several times. You don't think about stuff like. Gosh, I wish I would have had a brand new car before I died. Or, I don't know, maybe some people think about that. I know I never did. I think about the people that love me and that I love. That's what I think about. I've had some pretty close calls in life. Sometimes I don't think of anything too much. One time, uh, my husband and I were driving down the freeway and we got hit by a semi and we got dragged 400 yards sideways on the grill of the semi and the truck driver got out and said, well, you know, at least you guys are okay. And I thought, okay, define okay. I'm not okay right now. My head feels like it's going to explode. I had a headache for a month. It was not just a headache. It was just like blow my brains out kind of headache, you know? Just every day, every day, every day, every day. I didn't think it was ever going to go away. And instead of burrito, eh? It finally did go away, but at least you guys are okay. Wow. People say some strange things under stress, you know. I did I said no, I'm I'm not okay.
My head hurts. <laughs> this is drug us four hundred yards down the freeway on the front end of your grill and didn't even know we were there. Yeah. My head hurts. But don't be a whip, right? Don't be a whip. Yeah. Wow. So um, what I was thinking of the entire time really was um, remain calm. Don't freak out. Remain calm. And that set a good example for my husband. Because then it didn't, if I started freaking out and screaming and losing it, imagine what that would do to him. Right? So then you'd have two people in the car, one screaming and freaking out, and the other one trying to calm the other one down, and I was driving, and there's no room for freaking out when you're driving. You gotta need to maintain calm when you're driving. There have been times when I have had such bad panic attacks that I have put my car in park in the middle of the road, jumped out, and started running. And it was a good thing that there were other people in the car to drive it because it would have been stuck in a traffic jam, but I had that feeling like I had to run. Run, 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 you know. Ah, something's chasing me. It's like a, like a lion's coming out for me, and there's nothing there. She don't know that. Um, that's why I have these Don't Be a Wimp videos, because I am probably sometimes feel like the world's biggest wimp. I feel like that. I do. I mean, I have so much anxiety and panic. And I've had that for so many years. I have agoraphobia so much. But I'm fighting it. I fight it every single day. And there was a woman that was my neighbor. Her name was Zelda. Zelda Llewellyn. She was in her 80s. And there was a time when I could not even come out of the place that I lived. You could have caught that place on fire. And I would have stayed there and burned alive. I was so afraid of going outside and being around people. I was that terrified. And this beautiful lady came over to my trailer and she sat down and she said, I hear you're having some kind of problems, you know, with coming outside and stuff. And I said, yeah, I am. And I explained to her my symptoms. I'm panicking. I'm having these terrible panic attacks. My heart is just pounding out of my chest. I'm waking up in the middle of the night with this pounding. Anyway, okay, let's see. Here's Maria and Ricardo's. Now, this is whole wheat tortillas made with organic flour and pure sunflower oil. So, we're going towards organic on this one. These are smaller than the other ones. That's cool. We'll be adapt to it. Anyway, so Zelda told me that she had those for years. And and I thought, what? No way. I'm the only person who feels like they're going to die. You know, with this pounding heart thing and how oh, I'm going to die, I'm going to die. And I start to go numb and freak out. And she said, no. She has had those for years and years. She said she took a little bit of medication to control it for her anxiety. And, um, I was stunned, completely stunned, because here she is in her 80s, and she's telling me she had the same thing that I have, and she's telling me that, I mean, I watched her, she stayed at home, and she cooked for her husband, and she was just a great wife, and a, just a great person, um, and I thought that, you know, how could that happen to her? Well, you don't live to be in your 80s or 90s, 100, 50, whatever, without having 
bad things happen to you. And she had some rough times in her life, some real rough times. And uh, I guess that caused the panic attacks. It's either that or chemical imbalance or something happened. She was a very sensitive woman. So I, I think Don't Be a Wimp 101 videos is basically, I'm making them to help you get out of your your comfort, your comfort zone. You think you can't survive on beans and tortillas, you can. You think you can't survive on potatoes and make potato pancakes, you can. You think you can't make a meal with just salmon and crackers and some eggs, you can. Um, I'm just saying, we all have things that we work on. I'm not going to go running outside right now and shaking everybody's hand out there and howdy neighbor, you know, nice to meet you and all that. No, I mean, there's certain limitations that we all have. Um, I might be able to do that one time. And then after that, I probably would hide in the house. So you see how I'm folding these, right? These are all being folded, like the envelope style, in rolls, and stuck in a freezer bag. Like that. So you're like, what is the point today? What's the point? What are you trying to get across? I don't know. I really don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to get across. Maybe that... We all have stuff and oh, we deal with it the best way we can. There are times when I would rather just stay in the house and starve to death rather than walk out that door. Because that's how scary it is for me to be around people. They seem, people to me seem so angry. Maybe they're not angry. I know I'm probably the people who are watching my video. You're not angry people. You know, you'd say, hey, I'll be your friend. Maybe you're not an angry person, but I, I don't really take to people so quickly, you know? There's probably a lot of people like that. Maybe they call that being an introvert. Maybe that's what an introvert is. They are more comfortable with a book than they are around people. Maybe because they don't have to talk to the book. So, these videos are in a way helping me to try to get out of my comfort zone. I feel like I'm talking to people and it's making me anxious, yes. I'm having anxiety right now as I do this. And depression. But, I'm trying, I am really trying, okay, so we got this envelope technique down, we're rolling, so I think you got it, I think you pretty much got how to make bean burritos, right? We've done it. We've got the rolling technique down. We're putting them in the freezer bags. We're going to put these in the freezer. And they last a long time. Try to squeeze the air out, as much air out of these bags as possible. Because you don't want air going in there, forming ice crystals and things like that. Use your freezer bags and do that. So you put three or four. If you've got the little small ones, you can put four in, usually. If you've got the bigger ones, you put three in. And so, basically, I'm going to finish the rest of these. There's not that many. Right about here, I think I did a pretty good uh, estimate on how many I'd need. So, just to let you know, today was kind of a slower video, and that's just how I am. Sometimes we have our slow days. But I hope you learned something about making refried beans and how to roll a burrito.
next video will probably be something pretty cool. Well, cool to me anyways. All right, you guys, you have a good one. And I do enjoy your company. Thank you.